Um, so, uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. And this paper presents some outputs for my postdoctoral research developed at the Department of Geography at the Ohio Holloway University of London. Can you see the slides changing? Yes, we can. Perfect. So uh, this paper is explored William Birch's Brazilian collections held in the Economic Botany Collection at Kew Gardens. And Birch's collection could provide a detailed picture of the botanical diversity of the Brazilian territory in the 19th century, and also bring visibility to the high actors who largely contributed to the scientific travels whose labor, practice, and knowledge were omitted from the surviving archival records. About the uh, Economic Botany Collection, so uh, in September 1847, the key director, Sir William Dixon Hooker, opened to the public the Museum of Vegetable Products, the first known museum of this kind of the world. You can see a picture of this museum. Um, and according to Hooker, the museum's purpose was to store and display all kinds of useful and curious vegetable products, which neither the living plants of the garden nor the species of the barren could exhibit. And by the 1850s, uh, the museum was now known in the city circles as the Museum of Economic Botany and nowadays Economic Botany Collection. And this collection houses an extraordinary range of artifacts, all derived from plants from different parts of the world. This collection represents all aspects of human interactions with plants. So who was William Burton? The British artist, botanist, and naturalist William John Burton is best known among 19th century travelers for his famous expedition to St. Helena and South Africa in the beginning of the 19th century. Since Burton's time in St. Helena, he wanted to explore and botanize in Brazil. However, those, those useful aspects and professional commitments, he decided to travel to Cape Town. And only in 1825, Burton managed to travel to Brazil as one of the members of a British diplomatic mission. Uh, he will have a map of his uh, journey in Brazil. And Burchell's initial plan in South America was to visit uh, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina. However, his travel plans changed to the news received in 1828 concerning his studies he will have. Uh, so he decided to travel northwards to the province of Pará, situated in the Amazon biome, to return directly to England. In a five-year journey, Burchell traveled through coastal places to the Brazilian backlands, exploring regions which were unknown and little explored by European travelers, as he mentioned in a letter to William Hooker. Burchell produced hundreds of drawings and collected numerous natural history species. He collected an amount of 10,000 plant species besides insects, birds, snakes, and shells. Burchell's Brazilian collections were as large as those he collected in his famous travel to South Africa. However, in contrast to his travel to South Africa, Burchell failed to publish from his expedition to Brazil, and his journey and collections are less well known than his work on Africa. And this perhaps should explain the relatively slight attention he had received with Brazilian historiography. Uh, Burchell produced uh, two main manuscripts about his Brazilian travels. One is this catalog of Brazilian plants, which is a nine volume, writing seeds and writing the field. Burchell indicated where each plant was, had been collected, with its date, and a number that refers to the colors of the plants, the leaves, and the flowers will be served from nature. So he will have the color chart to use it in the field. For some species, Burchell uses the vernacular names and mentions its traditional uses, especially for the plants, the plants gathered in the Amazon region. This catalog is a primary source of information on Brazilian ecological diversity. The other manuscript is this index of the original Brazilian and Portuguese name of plants. Uh, this manuscript was organized by Bircher in London after his return from Brazil. In this manuscript, Bircher noted the vernacular names of the plants collected by him in the reference number which he refers to the catalog. This unique manuscript is itself an original contribution to the botanical science and a tool for future travel naturalists. This manuscript represents how the indigenous knowledge was translated into the knowledge system situated in the British institutions and museums. So uh, after his death, uh, his sister donated his collection to different institutions in the United Kingdom. 
and in May 1865, part of his collections was specifically related to the Museum of Economic Botany. And we have here the museum entry books and the donation of his sister. Uh, according to the Economic Botany Collection, 94 items from Russia's expeditions are currently held in these collections. And the larger part of the collections is formed by Brazilian objects. Despite the challenge of collecting remote places, exposed to geographical elements in the relatively high cost of Brazilian expedition, Bolshan made significant and extensive botanical collections in different biomes of Brazil. For example, in the Atlantic Forest, the Amazon Rainforest, and the Brazilian Savannah, the Serrata. Regarding Bolshan, most of the botanical species at the Economic Botanical Collections were collected in the current states of the Rio de Janeiro, situated in the Atlantic Forest and the current state of Pará, situated in the Amazon forest, at a time when the Brazilian native vegetation of these regions was still preserved. So uh, here we have an example of this database about William Burchell and the information available for each object um, of his list, of his collection. And uh, about the, the methodology, the archive that I use here, we have some examples of the websites I also uh, consulted. And by crossing reference and available information found in Bruxelles archives in two garments and at websites of the Global Diversity Information Facility, Lands of the World and Her Flora, it was possible to obtain information concerning Bruxelles field work, like the date and place where the plants were collected, the traditional uses by local people, uh, Sometimes we have indicated this traditional use on the label found at the Economic Botany Collection or in their bio sheet or in the catalog of Brazilian plants. So I have to consult all these resources. In the next slide, I'm presenting some objects found at the Economic Botany Collection, which illustrates Bursa's interest in using for native plants and its traditional uses by Brazilian indigenous and local people. I stress that Bursa's collections were made before the Museum of Economic Botany was found. Uh, so, uh, the first uh, object in Bursa's collections was these fruits from a plant called Tukum. Uh, Bursa collected his uh, fruits in the Atlantic Forest, uh, also collected the spadics of this plant, of this palm tree. And this palm tree has edible fruits with a very sweet flavor. While the leaves, you can see the leaves in his, uh, his drawing here from Calm Arches, has a very strong fiber called tukun. And this uh, fiber was used to make artifacts for fishing, bakery, ropes, and other indigenous crafts. And uh, Calm Arches well illustrated the, the leaves of this, of this uh, species. The another object is for the Brazilian Amazon. Bursa brought raw rubber from the Pará rubber tree. This large tree is found in wetlands and close to the rivers in the Amazon basin. The milk latex of the Via Brasiliensis is the raw material of natural rubber, largely used by the population for the Amazon forest in the 19th century. In Bursa's catalog of Brazilian plants, he also noted that indigenous people used the gum of Seringueira to guarantee adhesion to produce ceramics and other objects with clay. So here we have this example of this economic botanical collection um, linked to his catalog of Brazilian plants. Uh, Bush also brought seeds of the Pará rubber tree, which were donated to his friend, the British horticulturist William Catlin, 1831. And later, some seeds of the sitting data were donated to the Museum of Economic Botany. So we have here an example uh, from his catalog of uh, the seeds brought from the Pará and who donated to his friend and also to the Museum of Economic Botany. Uh, the another object is interesting. Uh, Bursa presented a sample of the cassava bread. You can see here some samples of this bread. Uh, this bread was largely used by native Brazilians and until nowadays, manioc is one of the most important crops among indigenous people being part of the Amazonian food culture. And here in his bearing sheet, we have some um, locations uh, about the 
the vernacular names and how uh, the art was used by local people. And it's very interesting how um, he used these viral sheets to know to, to, to connect memory from the field while he, and later when he will be in, in England. Uh, so, from the Amazon forest, birds are collected fruit of the kumaru. You can see here an example of this fruit. This native plant was largely used as an medicinal plant to treat inflammation, cardiac problems, tooth pain, and spark. The bark, the fruits, and the seeds were the main parts used by native Brazilians for medicinal purpose. Besides that, the seeds of the kumaru are also a food resource as they have a very uh, sweet flavor. So people also use this um, in this uh, daily culinary in the Amazon forest. The last object from his collection that I selected to present it here is the anative plant from the Brazilian savanna called a flammable plant, candomba. Uh, in 1828, Burchard picked this uh, plant in the Hupestrian fields in central Brazil. And the bare resinous stems were largely used to illuminate pathways and houses and to light fires. Smoke from burning candomba is a natural protection against mosquitoes during the evening. An important information it was lived in a mullet ranch. So probably birds of the this plant being used while traveling through the Brazilian backlands and sleeping uh, in a ranch, as you can see in his own job. So uh, the majority of academic quotes about Brazilian well, birds of Brazilian travel focus on his contribution to natural history and image make about the tropics. By contrast, there have been three examinations on the agents of indigenous people on his journey. Although Burchell loved traveling alone, his methodology in the field was not easy to accomplish, especially in traveling to a familiar environment in a tropical region. In 1888, after three months traveling from the central Brazil to the Amazon region, Burchell arrived at the fluvial port of Porto Real. This port was a place where travelers could find essential provisions and laborers for their travels, including behind the crew and the vessel from the sand in the river to read the north coast of Brazil. I highlight that as Burchell learned Portuguese during his travel, it was setting a significant element of inter interaction with local people. Uh, the crew of this canoe, as you can see here in his, his sketch, was usually consisted by 15 to 20 people from Ribeirinho people or indigenous population calling indigenous canoeiros because they have the practical knowledge to navigate and to find edible food and shelter in the riverbed. And Bursha spent two months traveling in this river, probably with this crew. Bursha ventured in the Amazon basin by traveling across the Tocantins River, where the inexperienced tropical traveler had a series of encounters of indigenous inhabitants who provided valuable information on how to survive in the field, as well as how to observe the nuances of tropical nature, collect usable species, mainly nature science, find a tropical base camp, and locate better ways to collect plants in the forest. Uh, despite the, sorry, during the replenishment stops Russia made along the Tocantins River, uh, travelers had a chance to establish contact with indigenous groups visiting their communities their all their years. And in his catalog of Brazilian plants, Russia mentioned the several stops he made along the river village and indigenous communities in the year of 1829. Although indigenous people's names and labor were missing from Burchard's wide accounts, his drawings, you can see in this slide, give insights about the direct or indirect involvement in the expedition. Burchard represented the individual from the communities that he visited during his navigation, like the Pinajé, Carao, and Xerente groups. It is not clear from the drawings whether Captain Francisco Xerente, José Carao, and João Pinto were employed in Burchard's expedition. But as they agreed to seek for a portrait in exchange of payments or gifts, we can now know that this encounter and exchange of knowledge contracts took place. Certainly, their skills and critical knowledge would have been used in the process of locating, identifying, and collecting useful species, mainly the native medicinal plants from the Amazon region. Birch's objects at economic botany collection highlight knowledge of production and circulation in the 19th century although in many cases, some practices and skills remain untold. And to conclude, uh, 
Birch's object held by the economic botany collections help to understand how the geographic and natural history of the tropical environment could be made known in the metropolitan centers as these collections translate the local and indigenous knowledge that nowadays are available in the British archives. As we saw, Birch was involved in the circulation of plants, seeds, animals, and artifacts from the tropical region to acknowledge a structure situated in the metropolis. It is highly probable that Virgil could have identified all the native plants and their common names and traditional uses independently of native inhabitants, especially in places little explored by European travelers. Virgil's observations and collections of Brazil were assembled at a time when the vegetation of the Amazon region in Cerrado was its natural state and the medicinal uses of plants were confined to the traditional indigenous population, especially Brazilian backlands. By recuperating their whole from the archives, glimpses of the high presence and contributions of the local people to Brazil's Brazilian travels were found, providing valuable evidence for questioning the need of the long and self-sufficient traveler and contributing to larger historical geographies of explorations. So here we have some reference. Thanks so much for your attention and I look forward to the questions. Thank you.